At this time, it gives me a great deal of pleasure as we move forward to introduce to you my colleague in the Senate, my former colleague in the House of Representatives, Kirsten Gillibrand. Thank you and good evening, everyone. It's a great honor to be here for this important time of reflection and remembrance. This morning, as I listened to all the names being read aloud at Ground Zero, I was mindful of the devastating loss that each loved one continues to experience and the profound pain that we all share. September 11th will always live in the hearts and minds of all Americans not only as we remember on this day and at that site, but every day as we remember them in the places nearest to us, those small places around the breakfast table, backyard barbecues, the edge of a child's bed, in schools and on city blocks, where families continue to live and love and to try to carry with a renewed purpose and direction. Mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, sons, daughters were all taken so suddenly. Their passions, their dreams, they were all left for those closest to them to carry on, to honor, to pursue. These family members and friends have so often chosen to serve, to improve their communities, to honor those lives of the loved ones lost. Time and time again, we have seen those closest to the victims inspired to work for causes and concerns, advocate for others, volunteer on behalf of those who are most in need, all choosing kindness and acts of good deeds to respect and respond to something so incomprehensibly evil. These responses were not just limited to those who lost someone in this tragedy. Millions of Americans witnessed the horrors of September 11th and were moved to make this world a better place. They've taken up service as a memorial to the victims, honoring their lives and improving the lives of loved ones in their honor. These acts are means of expressing love and loss and means of turning a senseless tragedy into millions of acts of compassion and unity. I hear so many stories of victims, families, friends, and others coming together to make our communities and our country a better place for others. In one of the countless acts of kindness I was so moved to hear about, many young people who lost parents in these attacks who went to New Orleans to reach out to the victims of Hurricane Katrina, remembering what it was like to have strangers come to their aid with food and comfort at their darkest hour. This is solid proof of the human spirit. From such senseless tragedy can rise purpose, compassion, and unity. We see first responders here in New York continuing their service putting their lives in harm's way and continuing the essential life-saving work that their lost and sick comrades are no longer there to help them. We can never forget the heroic actions of our first responders from here and around the country who risked all on September 11th. I was proud to introduce the James Adroga 9-11 Health and Compensation Act in the Senate. And I've joined the rest of the entire New York delegation to ensure the treatment for those who face potential life-threatening health effects because of the extraordinary toxins released at Ground Zero on that day. I can think of no greater testament to the victims of September 11th than in the positive and inspirational actions that millions of Americans have taken on their behalf, honoring their dreams, making the difference as a testament to their life and their legacies. I'm so thankful that we have come here together, not only tonight, 
but as a nation, to recognize the importance of public service. I was so proud to support the Edward M. Kennedy Serve America Act, which named September 11th as the National Day of Service and Remembrance. In this time of crisis and uncertainty, so many people feel the need to contribute and to do something for the greater good. We will harness the millions of hearts and minds all across America to honor the memories of the victims of 9-11. When we create hope and opportunity in the lives of others, we allow love, decency, the promise to triumph over cowardice and hate. As Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. I applaud the families and friends and fellow Americans of those victims for choosing light and love through service as a means of honoring these victims on this day. Thank you and God bless you all.